Hey there, it's Aaron, and it is uh, a little after 9 on uh, February 16th, 2016. As you can see in the background there, there's Donna now. She's hanging out with me. I wouldn't say I'm too busy. I do have a new job uh, with a company called Source for Teachers. And uh, just look at my phone every day and jobs come up on there. And uh, what I do is I substitute for uh, paraprofessionals who are one-on-one -on -one aides with uh, uh, students. Or I will be getting paid for the first time for uh, this job uh, on Friday of this week. With that being said, I haven't really gotten a lot of music. It's just the way it is. I've gotten two things since the last video. Um, no vinyl, sadly. Um, okay, uh, first thing I want to show is John Cale, Music for a New Society. Uh, this is the reissue. Uh, this album has been out of print for years on CD. Uh, the last time it was on CD was sometime in the 90s, I think 93, 94. And if you were to get, before this, if you were to get a copy of that version, you'd be paying more than $30, like somewhere in the $30, $40 range. For me, uh, I was lucky enough to find the, a vinyl copy amongst uh, a bunch of my college radio stations, vinyl records. It uh, was among, I don't know how many they have there, uh, but I found that they had a lot of John Cale in there, and this was one of them, and I thought, great, I can transfer it with my uh, USB turntable. Now, the transfer wasn't the best ever, but uh, it held up until... Uh, John Cale decided to finally re-release it. Not only has this album been reissued, it comes with a brand new album, and that album is called M Fans. It is a reimagined version of the Music for a New Society album. So, with it being reimagined, uh, some songs are changed up with, uh, I, I don't know, how uh, like auto tune, uh, electronic sounds, and whatnot. Uh, which John Cale has been uh, fascinated with for the last uh, couple of years. So um, he decided to uh, re-record the album, but not every song. Given that guy from the college radio station, I've listened to this a couple of times, and boy, is it depressing. It is a very, very bleak album. But, uh, you know, being a member of the Velvet Underground, uh, you know, his other... Bandmates, Lou Reed made Berlin, Nico made uh, Mar The Marble Index and Desert Shore, Desert Shore, which John Cale produced. In terms of favorite songs, I like uh, Taking Your Life in Your Hands. Uh, if you were still around, although I do like the re-recorded version on uh, M Fans, the new one, which uh, John Cale released one year after Lou Reed's passing as a tribute to him. And the other Velvet Underground guys, uh, Sterling Morrison, Nico, and even Andy. Uh, Close Watch, which was originally on his Helen of Troy album. Uh, yeah, he re-recorded it for this album. And he also re-recorded it for this album. Uh, that's it's a good re-recording. Uh, Chinese Envoy. Changes Made is a good one. Uh, it's probably the most uh, radio-friendly of them, because I think... The record execs were just begging him to make some sort of radio-friendly song because these were just too bleak for, uh, you know, commercial audiences. Uh, Damn Life is good. Uh, it's just a really good album. Uh, there's one unreleased song on here, Library of Force, which is pretty good. And then there's bonus tracks here, Chinese Envoy and Thoughtless Kind of outtakes, uh, outtake versions of those. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a good album from, uh, I think, a very, very underrated solo artist. Uh, John Cale's stuff is really good. I wouldn't start with this if you don't have any of John Cale's solo stuff. If you're new to John Cale's solo material, I would recommend getting Paris 1919 and uh, a set called, uh, what is it, The Island, the Island Years, uh, which is two discs consisting of three albums that he made with Island Records, those albums being... Fear, Slow Dazzle, and Helen of Troy. So if you get that set, you got three albums on two discs. So, yeah. 
The new album is okay. Uh, it really pains me to say it. Uh, some of the songs reimagined here I mean, lean more towards the I can't believe I'm saying this, uh, hip-hop. There's a video of an interview of John Cale. Uh, it turns out the guy really, really likes hip-hop. Uh, he's just mesmerized by it, by the electronic sounds and uh, dubstep and auto-tune. He, he loves using it all. Uh, which this uses, but um, I like some of the re-recordings on here. I mentioned I like If You Were Still Around. Thoughtless kind is good. He does a good re-recording of Changes Made. Other than that, I can't really remember any of the other ones. Um, the songs are all in a different order compared to the original. Uh, Close Watch is pretty good. Uh, that's a good re-recording. Um, yeah, but it it's okay. Uh, it's worth a listen, at least. If you don't like it, then, you know. That's okay, too. Okay, the next thing I want to show is Jefferson Airplane, original album classics. I've done many videos about these budget sets uh, where they give you five, three, four rounds for some 20 bucks or less. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. I have to mention, talking about Jefferson Airplane, at the end of last month in January, Paul Katner passed away, as did Signe Anderson. And in a very, very creepy coincidence, uh, they both died on the same day. Now, with Signe, her death was reported about two days after Paul had died. Turns out uh, they both died on the same day. And they were both 74 years old. That's creepy. When it comes to Jefferson Airplane, I really don't have a lot. I had about three of their albums, one from iTunes and the other two from vinyl rips. So this set has two of the albums that, two of those three albums that I have, and then uh, three, the other three are new to me. So uh, I'll go through the entire set here and uh, just really, I'm going to be talking about the discography of Jefferson Airplane almost, up to Volunteers. Going into this set here, we start off with their first album, Jefferson Airplane Takes Off. Not a bad album. Uh, very blues-oriented uh, compared to the stuff that came later. Uh, I was not expecting to like this album because, well, I don't know. Usually, I haven't heard, I haven't really heard a lot about this album, so I wasn't expecting to like it, but it's not that bad. Uh, there's a lot of good songs on here. I'm uh, just trying to think about which ones. Blues from an Airplane's good. Let Me In's good. Uh, it's No Secret, which was a little bit of a hit for them. Their cover of Tobacco Road's good. Come Up The Years is good. Uh, Show For Blues, which Singing Anderson uh, sings lead vocals on. And, um, yeah. And any weak songs, uh, they cover a Get Together, which was later made a hit by a group called The Youngbloods but it's called Let's Get Together on here. And uh, compared to the Youngbloods version, very different versions. Um, I'm going to stick with the Youngbloods version. All right, the next album, uh, their second one, is Surrealistic Pillow. This is the one that I had from iTunes. Uh, got, in from my, got this from iTunes uh, shortly after my fourth year in camp, which would have been 2007. And uh, yeah, it's a great album. Uh, I like it so much, I have it on vinyl. <laughs> Look at the difference there. It's cool to have to compare the, the two. Yeah. Uh, this is a great album. Great album. One of the best albums from uh, The Summer of Love, 1967. Uh, what song? I'm going to look on here because it's bigger print. Um, she Has Funny Cars, Somebody to Love, which was a big hit for them. My Best Friend is Good Today. Come Back to Me is good. Uh, Three-fifths of a mile in ten seconds. That is an underrated song. Love that one. Uh, DCBA 25 is good. How Do You Feel, which goes into Embryonic Journey. Then White Rabbit, which was the other big hit on here with uh, Somebody to Love. And then it ends with Fantastic 
or Plastic Fantastic Lover. Great album. Great, great album. Their best, in my opinion. All right, next up is After Bathing at Baxter's. Uh, this one was released in 1967, so just a couple months after Surrealistic Pillow. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, this album, uh, first time listening to it, I liked it. Uh, still do. Can't say that I love it. Uh, I don't know. I was a little bit disappointed at first because I thought I would like this more. Because I heard it was really psychedelic, and it is very psychedelic. But very psychedelic to the point where, I don't know, some of the songs just drag on for a really long time. Um, the songs are not on here. I gotta look at the box here. Look at the songs. All right, what's good on here? The Ballad of You, Me, and Puneel. I think that's how, I'm saying. I think that's how you say it. It's a good one. Uh, Young Girl Sunday Blues is a good one. Martha. Wild Time, I like. Uh, it's, I'm having a hard time remembering some of these. I do like Won't You Try a Saturday Afternoon. It's a good uh, closer to the album. Uh, the other songs are good, too, but songs like Spare Change and uh, A Small Package, mostly uh, Spare Change. They just go on forever. Um, I mean, there's good stuff, mind you, in those songs, but you couldn't keep it any shorter. Uh, the next one is Crown of Creation, and uh, this was the other one along with Surrealistic Pillow that um, I already owned. Now, I already own this album on vinyl, and then I ripped I did a vinyl rip of this. So uh, it wasn't the best sounding vinyl rip. So uh, having this is nice. Uh, this is a good album. Uh, I like this, for the time being, I like this more than uh, After Bathing at Baxter's. Uh, it's a lot more, uh, it's a very apocalyptic album. Uh, favorite songs? I Love Lather, which is a song Grace Slick. Uh, supposedly wrote about uh, their drummer Spencer Dryden, but uh, she claims that it's written from the viewpoint of Spencer Dryden being the oldest member of the group, that he was 30 uh, when, by the time his album came out. And uh, even though he was the oldest of the group, he acted like a child at times. So that's what the song was about. So uh, yeah, really good song. Uh, I like Triad. Star Trek is good. Uh, Crown of Creation. Ice Cream Phoenix. Uh, the House on Puneo Corners. Yeah. This is a good album. The last in the set is a live album called Bless Its Pointed Little Head. And I think there, right there on the cover, is Jack Cassidy, a uh, bassist. Uh, this is a good album. Uh, as far as live albums go, it's good. Uh, the only problem I have with this album is that some of the, the live performances of these songs are just okay. They're a little weird. I do like their song, uh, The Other Side of Life, or The Other Side of This Life, it's saying here on the box. Um... I like the version that I heard in the Gimme Shelter movie, the Rolling Stones, the movie about the Altamont concert, which Jefferson Airplane played at, and that was the song they played before Marty Ballin got knocked out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I like the version in that movie more than whatever's on here. I don't know. I, it's a good live album. For, for what it is, it's good. And uh, the last one I want to show, well, actually, i got two here. In terms of Jefferson Airplane now, Volunteers. Uh, this is a great album. I have a vinyl rip of this at the moment, and uh, yeah, really good album. Uh, title track is an instant classic. Uh, we can be good together. 
uh, Wooden Ships, Eskimo Blue Day, great album. And uh, Wooden Ships was uh, also recorded by uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I don't know if I'm going to get this one CD. I just might. Because uh, the amount of transfer for this one, it's better than Crown of Creation, but not by much. So, um, yeah. But as an album, good album. The other one I have is not an album. Uh, it's a pretty sets album. The worst of Jefferson Airplane. Uh, I got this for a dollar, like, a little over ten years ago. Huh? Yeah, I haven't played this in a while. This has, this goes up. It's the best of Jefferson Airplane from there. How many albums did they have at that point? Like six. Everything up to their debut to Volunteers is on here. Um, not all of it, just the the best of it, or is it? The title suggests the worst of Jefferson Airplane. Uh, not a bad place to start. I mean, if you're all for compilations, uh, which I'm really not for the most part. But uh, not a bad place to start if you want to get into Jefferson Airplane. But uh, if you're more like me, who wants to get uh, the albums, this will do it for you. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it for now. So, uh, Thank you for watching, and I will try my best and uh, upload a video uh, soon.